from Blackbridge Brewery. This is their Black Roasted Creamy Milk Stout. Brewed in Saskatchewan. Specifically in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. And the reason that I've chosen the Saskatchewan beer today is because I'm putting together one of these kits that I got from Universal Solder, and that's where he is based in Saskatchewan. So I thought it was only fitting. Um, so he sent two kits, two different kits. Um, you can see both of them in the mailbag a couple weeks ago. Um, but the one that I'm going to do today is the one that's based on the Wemos D1 Mini. So we'll just pull some of this stuff out here. We've got the board. And as I observed when I was first opening this uh, package up, it's a very heavyweight board. Nice black uh, solder mask and um, what do we got? Gold, uh, gold plated, I think, or gold like plated pads. Very classy looking. And in here we have a D1 Mini. And then this side we've got all the other bits and pieces. Which I could leave in this nice double sided bag, but I'm not going to. So we've got uh, some header pins, a whole bunch of them. Uh, we've got the four relays, more header pins, a bunch of uh, little jumper plugs here. Uh, we got some uh, connectors, more jumper plugs, some LEDs, some diodes, a little sill resistor, um, a capacitor, and a few other resistors. Okay, and then that's the D1 Mini, and then we got two chips here. We have an MCP two three zero zero eight. So this MCP-23008 is an 8-bit I.O. expander. Serial interface. Interesting. Specifically, it is the I2C one. Okay, just a GPIO expander. So here is the DIP version. we got serial clock and serial data coming in. Uh, we got three address pins. Uh, reset. Not connected. Uh, INT. Interrupt output. Sure. Uh, VSS, VDD, and then the eight GPIOs on that side. And an LTVS, no, LTV845 by the looks of it. And the other chip looks like it is a four-channel opto-isolator or opto-coupler uh, with Darlington transistor type outputs. That makes a certain amount of sense, I guess, if you got a microcontroller talking to... Uh, or controlling relays, you don't want it doing it directly because that's just going to pull far too much current from the microcontroller pins. But Darlington transistors have a, quite a bit of current amplification. That's their whole point of them existing. And then with the opto-isolator uh, in there, you're not drawing any more than one LED's worth of current from your uh, microcontroller, and there's no possibility of current spike feedback and stuff like that. So while we're looking at, looking stuff up here, we might as well take a peek at the manual that comes with this thing, or that's available for download on their website anyways, on the Universal Solder website. It's got uh, four relays on it, um, and it's got I2C connection going out of the board on those two pins there. So you can actually use it to control a bunch of other I2C devices in addition to the four that are on this board. That's kind of clever. It says you can do up to 32 relays on just a single two-wire I2C bus. So you can Wi-Fi control this whole thing. Obviously, that's why you'd use something like a D1 Mini. Um, but he's also included the stackable header, so you can put an OLED or something else stacked on top, just like any other shield. That's kind of a neat idea. Oh, that's what those jumpers are for. So some of the relays you can control over the wireless or you can choose some of them to just be connected directly to a hardwired input. Okay, that's kind of clever. And then we go straight to assembly instructions. I'll follow through, I'll follow those along when I'm building it, but... Um, and then you just use standard Arduino IDE to upload software into it. So he's got a demo sketch on the website, and that's what we're going to throw on there. But realistically, as long as you can talk to the I2C bus, you can write your own software to do whatever you want and then plug a backpack or a shield onto here for other inputs. You can put a temperature sensor on there or whatever you want. 
Da -da -da. Relays do not exceed 5 amps. Okay. That's still quite a lot, though. And he's not recommending it for higher voltages, for, uh, for line voltage. I think the relays are capable of it, but I don't think the tracks on the board are. And then there is the schematic. Okay, so there's the D1 Mini, and its only connections to the board are Power and Ground and the SCL and SDA. All right. It has, what's that, pull-up resistors, and then SCL and SDA are going off the board as well, so you can power other stuff. And then there's the address line, so you can jumper them however you want. And looks like he's got jumper pins on them. That's cool. And then the GPIOs go through these switches so you can select either the gpios to go through the resistors and control that or ah you got pins going off the board so you can jumper it so that you can just control the essentially the led and the optocoupler and thus resistor okay or just the relay i'm sorry and what are these ones those are the okay that's the ground side of the, the negative side of the leds in the opto so again, you can either have it on the circuit ground in here, or you can have them just going out to the, to the uh, pins going straight off board. Oh, so you can have these relays or one of them completely isolated from even the ground on the board. That's interesting. Uh, what's going on on the relay side here? We've got an LED and a resistor. That makes sense. Tell you that it's on. And then we have a flyback uh, clamping diode. It's actually fairly straightforward. All right, so I've got my soldering stand here. I've got my T12 iron warmed up and just off to the side. The solder of the day is Kester 1.2 millimeter or 0.050 inch uh, rosin core. I'll give it a try anyways. Um, it sh that should be uh, fine for a uh, through hole board like this. Now then, which component should we start with? Well, we might as well follow the suggested order in the manual. We suggest starting with the resistors and diodes beside the relays, the 100 nano cap, the LEDs, the ICs, resistor networks, and then all the headers. Four resistors and four diodes beside the relays. Um, those resistors would be the ones for the, uh, for the LEDs. I'm not sure how much of a detailed narrative I'm going to go into here. I think I might just uh, do a fair bit of skipping ahead. little resistor modules once there's a little dot on one end of them that's the common end so each one of these is going to be a resistor to that common all the way across and the same on here these are very commonly used where you want a bunch of pull up or pull down resistors of the same value so the dot goes at that end because that's marked on the board just like that, and this one, the dot goes at that end. So for the header pins, I have both singles and doubles. 
I'm thinking that the doubles are probably for these jumper blocks up here. So I've never actually worked with these double ones before. There we go. That wasn't so bad. Is that just drop in there? Right. Um, okay, I think that's all the header pins on there. So now then, these relays, I didn't really look at them earlier. These are Omron 5 volt coil, 5 amp 250 VAC on the contact side. Okay, and he did say that not to use them, not to uh, try and draw more than 5 amps through them too, didn't he? Okay, that's the relays in. So there should be nothing left except for the Wemos D1 socket. Then I can put the headers that go into this board on here. And then with those pins on there, that can go into here. And I notice the outline of the D1 Mini is on the silk screen. So you can put it like that, that little cutout, it's got the reset button in it. So that'll sit just down nicely into there and I'll solder it up and then we can, uh, then I think we're ready for software actually. Yeah, I could do a bit better job of cleaning that up, but that's not too bad. I have to put in a few of the jumpers. Um, so now we'll connect all those guys to C and E. And then we'll try it. All right. So here in the Arduino IDE, we have the demo sketch from the, uh, from the website. And I've just spent a little bit of time making sure I've got the libraries, uh, find this ESP 8266 Wi-Fi library, which I didn't have installed for some reason, but I was able to pull it down from, uh, from GitHub and and install it uh that's i'm not going to go through how to how to install libraries it's uh it's only a google search away it shouldn't be that big a shouldn't be that hard to do if you've been playing with arduino much anyway back to this um there's the libraries set up wi-fi i'll set up mine in a second here out of your old gaze um, I'll give it an IP address. Uh, I think that one's not in use in my, my network. So we'll use that. Set up some variables, yada, yada, yada. Uh, okay. So here is the I2C. This is what we were looking for. Um, and there's the three jumpers high or low. The default is zero two seven, which is all jumpers open because they've got pull up resistors on them. If you remember. There's the address lines there, and there's the pull-up resistors, so that's going to make them all high. So 027 is the default, which is what we're going to go with. And the reason you want to change that is if you have other I2C things attached, right? But in this case, we don't. It sets up a serial port so that we can talk to it and monitor it on the serial console. That's nice. Void loop. Check, make sure that you got a connection and then just go through all the if thens about the relays okay one two three four if the request is to turn it on then bit set if the request is to turn it off then bit clear seems straightforward enough and address two address three address one address zero so that's the first four gpios on that uh i2c gpio expander okay and here is the HTML. That's relatively straightforward, I guess. I mean, the HTML is a little bit convoluted because if you've never done it, and I never have because I heard my teenager to do it the last time I needed some of that. You just compile it up and make sure that this works. And here we go. It is connected. So what happens if we go there? Aha, there we are. Refresh that page and relay one on, relay two on, 
three on, four on, four off, three off, two off, one off. Well, there you go. So that's pretty cool. Now I can control. Now I have to find things that I can control with this. But anything, anything up to five amps and relatively low voltage. Any suggestions? Or I suppose I could have the teenager uh, write some code for this thing too. Just to make it, uh, make it read things, read other stuff. Um, whatever, what, what backpack should I put on there or shield should I put on there? I wonder. Hmm. Oh, regardless of what I do with it, it is a pretty cool kit and it went together well. Um, these little jumpers took a little bit of rereading the manual, but you know, reading the manual actually explained it to me. Um, I could change things around. Um, I can use this with other I2C stuff, which is intriguing. Well, yeah, that's a uh, pretty neat little kit. I'm glad that that was sent to me to play with. I'm just doing that off to the side because it's fun to play with. Um, yeah, um, there'll be a link to this kit uh, down in the description, of course, and uh, comments and questions down in the, in the comments section as usual. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Universal Solder for sending this to me to take a look at and show you all. Um, I'm sure he'll join the comments at some point if you have questions for him. And if you have questions for me, like I said, down in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.